sometimes in life you find yourself on the right side of the line. We got a trio of threes talking about a four. <laughs> Just because it's called a stereotype doesn't make it a lie. <laughs> you can put that on my greatness statue, that okay. quote right there. Live from Texas, this is the Dry Line Farmer Podcast. <laughs> four thumbs and haste people these guys it's the dryline farmer podcast yes that is right ashton except now there's six thumbs and hates people because the actual ashton is here to join landon and i ashton how's it going down there in the hub city it's going pretty good i had to text you and remind you that i was still alive because i hadn't heard from you in a while and i was like you know what i need to get back on the podcast and i'm excited because i think we're gonna have some good content today well, you've already set the bar higher than Landon and I have ever been over. So, uh, thanks a lot for that for that unattainable goal. That's really nice I'm, of you. I'm just trying to, you know, draw in some listeners and you know set their expectations high as well because I I know we can make them laugh. Because honestly, who wants to hear two dudes laugh? Uh, you know, talk for 45 minutes. You got to have a chick in there, right? Yeah, I was surprised I was listening last week and I heard my voice on there and I was like, they're using me for clout right now, but I guess I'll accept it. It's it's all about credibility, Ashton. <laughs> it's what it's all about. That's why Landon doesn't talk for the first five minutes. He just sits there sitting, you know, resting on his hand, which is Shit better than other so things, <laughs> which is better than other things he does with it. But <laughs> I digress. <laughs> Landon, nothing's probably changed so from last week, has it? No. You're the same. You hadn't changed at all. No, not really. Well, a bit balder. let me. <laughs> that's impossible. Well, Landon, let me. Uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna do a little redress here from last week. He sent me a great text on something that we completely missed last week. Landon, before we get into our executive orders this week, tell us about who we forgot to pardon, and it was like so obvious we couldn't even miss it. We forgot to pardon Prison Mike from of the office. Co- of course. Prison Mike, you know, and now was he, uh, who was he, was he uh, enemies with the Dementors? Who was the gang? <laughs> Boy, no, the Dementors were at the prison. No, oh, okay. he, uh, he kidnapped the president's daughter and he never got caught. Oh, <laughs> but yet he was in but, prison. But he was in prison. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you think he'd had his story a little bit more uh, in line than that he did, but. Um, yeah, that was a good episode. Yeah, Prison Mike. The I just the the whole scene where Dwight puts those three or four dollar bills hanging out his back pocket and seeing if that guy was gonna pick <laughs> yeah. steal them out of his back pocket. Ashton, you saw that one, didn't you? I have, but I haven't watched The Office in a long time, and they took it off of Netflix. They took it off so of Netflix. Yeah, can't even go back and rewatch. And they make it impossible to bootleg on YouTube anymore. So all you can see is like bloopers and like deleted scenes. That's the main reason to our name is because he was he was there to scare those people straight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> probably get probably get time off there anyway. You know what we would call you? You we would call you the Bella de Ball. <laughs> it was funny on the episode. Y'all just sit there stoic and everything. Well, I guess <laughs> we're just gonna have to get into the intro. Well, uh, this is the Dryline Farmer podcast. I think still since um. We've already we're, we're like three or four minutes into this thing, but uh, last week we did pardons, and um, Ashton was th- was there no they weren't burning uh, what were those um, green scooters they have down there they weren't melting those down on inauguration day. No, they weren't. No, just when you know we won the final four game. I yeah. guess that's a little bit better than inauguration day. You you only burn your sh- own shit down when good things happen to you. That makes sense, you know. <laughs> yeah, they. And then what's funny is the next the next game after we burnt down Broadway, um, they brought in the SWAT team. That is so awesome. <laughs> they it. had like 18 wheeler trailers um, of SWAT stuff and we're monitoring Lubbock to make sure we didn't burn it down. But nothing like that on Inauguration Day. Did they call it the Cotton Squad? <laughs> that would have been funny. That would have been real funny. Been but awesome. no, I don't think they're as clever as you are. No, nobody is, Ashton. That's why. Especially it's, not in Lubbock. That's why there's only very few podcasts out there. You know, it's not like everybody's got their own or anything. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Ashton, before we get, we're supposed you're supposed to do all this like promoting at the beginning. I think now, tell us all um, about what you're doing with the Global Ag Network now, and uh, are you are you pretty much a co-host on Ag News Daily? What's going on? Yeah. So with Ag News Daily, we're doing good, chugging right along. It's Delaney and I now, and I am a co-host. I officially got to be put on the website, and so I have my cute little photo and my bio up there next to Delaney's, which is pretty cool, I guess. And then I'm no longer an intern. I am the digital content manager, which just happened this week. So we'll see how that goes. I'm adding a little bit more to my plate, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. She is no longer Ryan Howard. She is now a junior sales associate at a mid-range paper company. (laughs) So now now at my 10-year reunion. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That'll show them. That'll show them. (laughs) Well, yeah, things are going good on the network. Nothing, nothing too, too new that I can divulge to you. What can we do to create a scandal? We need a scandal or something. I mean, bad press is better than no press. I don't know. I probably would lose my brand new title, but I agree. I kind of live for the drama, so maybe we need to kind of stir the pot a little bit. I mean, we're all three Red Raiders here. Everybody else in the Big 12 hates us. We can think of something. Hey, Delaney's a Red Raider, too. That's right. Even Delaney's, a, she's a certified <laughs> Red Raider, yeah. Well, um, even though she's kind of a Midwestern, I don't want to say Yankee. That's a little strong, but she is a Midwestern nonetheless. But, uh, well, that's good, and you're doing your master's via online Texas Tech, and but yet they f- still charge you a full tuition. Yeah, they charge me full tuition, which was not favorable, to be honest, obviously. But, yeah, I'm just doing... My master's, everything is virtual, which kind of sucks, but good at the same time because I can do everything in my PJs, and I just turn my mic off. I probably should pay a little bit more attention than I do, but... Now, Landon, what year did you start wearing your PJs to class? Was it junior year? (laughs) Um, Your My Little Ponies? No, it was Rainbow Bright. Oh, Rainbow Um, Bright, that's right. Well, uh, I would say I'd probably say freshman year of high school. Oh, high school! I was talking college. You? Well, no, we, I never wear PJs at school. We uh, we had a pretty lax policy there in Hereford, Texas, Ashton, on our uh, dress. You know, as long as <laughs> there was a, there was a maternity <laughs> policy, you had to. But uh, nonetheless, it was it was a fun place to do. So, uh, well, guys, we've got executive orders. Uh, President Biden, whether you like it or not, has been producing and writing out all kinds of executive orders that he said ironically four years ago that only really a dictator would do so you know i guess when in rome you um, said it a few weeks ago did he say it just a few weeks ago well a month ago it yeah, kind of seems December. makes it even more relevant doesn't it well up to like 37 do what dant land is drinking what's he what's he up to 37 37 executive hell i think he crossed over 40 or 50 i don't know really I don't know. It was 37, I think, maybe yesterday. So, of course, I mean, they may be orders to, like, you know, get his stool softener on Express. <laughs> <laughs> this depends. Delivered straight to the residence of the White, off, uh, White House. But um, so in honor of that, we're going to have our own executive order since we honored Donald President Donald Trump with um, pardons. And um, so but we're not going to get into politics, but I can't help but be reminded with this whole impeaching a president that's not the president anymore. I always go back to that scene in Super Troopers where, like, you know, we're we're pulled over. We're already pulled over. We can't pull over anymore. You know, it's like, that's what always strikes me is what's going on. Like, he's already out. He can't pull over anymore. He's already not the president. No, we're going to pull you, you over You boys still. like Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you're a Super Trooper fan, aren't you, Ashton? Oh, yeah. Oh. I, again, I've seen oh. it. But it has oh. Been a oh my gosh! Well, at least you've seen it. Now the sequel, yeah. I watched about half of it, and I just it wasn't. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, they're up in Canada, and they're like, I don't know if they got kicked out of Vermont, but whatever the case, they're in Canada, and they're trying to be Mounties, and it's a, uh, it's a whole scene, man. It's a whole scene. But uh, I don't know when you're when you're trying to do some kind of judicial process, and now and now. The Democrat, the senior Democrat that's like a thousand years old, who's already said he's wanting to convict Trump, is going to be presiding over the process in the Senate. So, I mean, talk about a banana republic. But nonetheless, we're not going to go any further into that. 
But we've got our own executive orders, so we're going to get to that after we got Radar Ricardo. Why? Not so much that he likes doing the deals, but it's such a great transition because I don't know how to go from the first segment to the second segment. So we're just going to let Radar Ricardo uh, segue us into the next spot. So we're going to hear from him, and if I can think of a clever fake commercial, we'll do that too. But if we don't, it'll just be Radar Ricardo. So guys, stay with us, and we'll be right back with the second segment of the Dryline Barber Podcast and Executive Orders. Hey, give me a shot of this time, ASA. Hey, 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 this is Radar Ricardo, a daily city who bringing your Adrian and Popper podcast to weather update. Well, Brent, it's uh, great to be back in the States again. Uh, we had fun down in Honduras or whatever, but uh, hey, the embassy came through and they kind of fast tracked us back to, uh, you know, back to the States and we're kind of, you know, back here in the, uh, we're, we're not in the studios or whatever, you know, we're kind of like doing it all virtual or whatever, kind of like doing, we do weather, like, Weather reports have always been virtual. I mean, there's never been a guy, like, actually at your house, you know, telling the weather. That would be kind of crazy. That'd be kind of like some kind of sports guy, like, telling you the score before. No, that didn't be good. Hey, Michael. It's going to be, like, it was, like, pizza cold this morning, and, like, all the trees were, like, all white and whatever from the freezing fog. But this week, it's going to kind of warm up or whatever. And I looked at, like, like the, the uh, what is it called? The ASA, what's that? The, Oh, yeah, the 5 to 7, like, accumulated weather. Like, it's going to rain everywhere except, like, like Texas and, like, the Oklahoma Panhandle and, like, Kansas and, like, everywhere else. And, like, even Pichat Casey Seymour is going to have, like, rain or whatever in, like, Nebraska. But uh, right there where you're at, you're going to be in, like, D4, you know. It's like, you know, there's no innuendo or nothing there. But, uh, hey. You're going to get some more D4 for, uh, for a while before it beats a rain to me. But, uh, hey, Vato, we're just kind of hanging out, waiting waiting for the vaccination to come out. And uh, Diego's, like, sitting out on a lawn chair. And he's he's just, like, sitting there with, like, a reading of Vogue or something. Hey, what's that about the Oh, Cosmopolitan or whatever. But, uh, hey, we're just kind of chilling, waiting for the weather to change. And maybe, maybe it'll snow. It probably won't. But, hey, we're all excited and to be back here in the Estados Unidos. And uh, until next time, hey, Vato. I got nothing more to say than to say, stay chill and uh, be cool, Bato. Ah, 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 I thought I was going to forget to do that, ah, Bato. Hey, see you later. Thanks, Ricardo. We're glad you uh, scaled over that wall and made it back into the States, even though I don't know why you had to do that since you're a citizen. You were born in the uh, land. Where was he born at? Was it Ma- no, Matamoros is Mexico. Del Rio? Who's this? Ricardo. Oh, <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows? Well, that birth certificate looked real to me. So, you know, fool me once, I guess, is one of those things. <clears throat> but, uh, guys, we've got we've got executive orders. And, uh, yeah, without any more stalling, here we go. Oh, I didn't know this song had a... Now, Ashton and Landon can't hear this, but uh, I didn't know this had words. As we pledge cooperation in proud fulfillment of a great noble call. Can you imagine Trump singing this? All right, we're going to fade that out. They got Nixon there. They got all the great ones in this YouTube video. Fortunately, I don't think there's any copyright on Hill to the Chief. We'll... Uh, Ashton, as always, we're going to let ladies go first. Why don't you start out with your first one or two, and uh, Landon and I will critique it and see if you're right or wrong. First one that I have is that gingers have to be in full sleeves at all times in public. Gingers have to be in full sleeves. Full sleeves. That is so... Now, why is that? Because you're not a ginger. Have you ever seen a ginger? The redheads? Yes. What if we what if we've lost our hair? They're notoriously pale. So you're just gonna cover them up like a Saudi Arabian wife? Well I have to wear sleeve now. <laughs> <laughs> you took things there, but that's just that's just my personal opinion. You're not very much a I feminist. Did... A feminist. Yeah. Covering making all them cover up like that, that's terrible. 
What did I do all those curls for? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Landon never had leg day, so that's why he does wear pants every day. So <laughs> yeah. he looks like a he looks like a candy apple. <laughs> yeah, don't don't skip leg day. No, I see. I would have never crossed my mind. Now speaking of sunburns, I don't want to go through this whole spiel again. But now I'm not ginger, but I am slightly a blonde balding guy. But. Uh, <laughs> Whenever you go float the river, Ashton, and I don't know, are you still in the float in the river? You're still in the float in the river age, because I did it after I was out of college. But um, be sure and put your sunscreen on before you get in the water, is all I can say, because you don't want the tops of your feet sunburned and getting second degree sunburn or burns when you get back home. Especially on your head, because if you wear a backwards hat, you Ooh. get a red spot Ooh. right here. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so we got another friend that's about bald as landon and he had a um one of those mesh caps and he had the uh he forgot to uh douse his dome and he had the three-way uh oh, splitter actually. with the <laughs> 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 i nice. think he was playing golf and uh that's the only three-way he was ever going to get anyway so <clears throat> but um nonetheless yeah i can't imagine but tops of your feet ashton it's a terrible thing because it took me a week to get over it because I couldn't get out because every time you'd stand up the blood would go to your feet and it felt like somebody was jabbing you with a uh, ice pick. You should at least was, make a day where gingers could would go sleeveless. There, I know there's National Redhead Day. Let's look it up. When is I know there's a neck because it always trends on Twitter. Okay, National Ginger Day. That's Jiner. <laughs> Ginger Day. <laughs> Guess who I really liked? Jina. Let's see. <laughs> I think I'm crazy on this. <laughs> Gina. <laughs> National Redhead Day is November 5th, 2021. So can they at least wear um, short sleeves that day? Because it'll be fall, Ashton. Yeah, well, we can do that. Just their, their one day. But just, okay, that's what I was going to say. What, what if they like lived in Idaho or something? I mean, I guess you can still get sunburned there pretty bad. What brought what was that like the, your first one? Was like that was the first like Family Feud? That was the number one survey on yours. Yeah, that was the first thing I wrote down. Because that is so it, it's so random. Okay, give me give me number two because I, I'm dying to hear what number two is. <laughs> uh, kids under age three should have to wear muzzles in public. Damn, you just we, come straight to the throat. You do, man. Ashton is freaking lethal on this stuff. A muzzle? Have you? I I used to teach kids gymnastics, and they would come after me. Well, where, where? What part of town were you coaching them in? Uh, well. Okay, central? you don't have to answer that. You don't have to answer that. But um, what do they say on on Robin Hood men in tights? What part of Jersey are you from? South Central? <laughs> Dave Chappelle. <laughs> uh, that's a good movie. Little kid. Man, I, mine were kind of fun. These are kind of mean. Yeah, Ashton's yeah. kind oh of... Oh my gosh, I'll have to lighten it up. Oh, mm. well, mine are more inappropriate than than, than nice. Okay, but, well, uh, let, well, let's hear some. I'm kind of... I'm all right, so now. The, I'm very, the very first one that came to mind, and I we've kind of gone over this episodes and episodes ago, but there should be no more than two handicap spots in any parking lot. It's just, it's gotten out of hand. Walmart has, I don't know what the ones, that, well, I do know what the ones in Lubbock are. Probably, it's probably all universal at Walmart, but I know what, Landon, each lane, like each, like double lane has what, six spots? And then they've oh, got, probably. then they've got the straight pull in spots. They're not angled, so you can just roll in there, no pun intended. And then the driver is never even handicapped. They may, and the driver stays in, and the handicapped person has to go in and shop. I think all of the order online spots should replace the handicapped spots because the handicapped people should Except be. For a couple. No, all eliminate them. They are now Except all order online. Spot. No, if you're handicapped, you need to think ahead. Man, you're mean too on this. <laughs> all right, I'll give them one spot, one spot, and then all the and they have too many order online spots because they have like six or seven and like two may be full. And I think you need to, I think you you'd be better off focusing on people that that park so shitty they take up multiple spots. We should uh, do something to those people. Well, yeah, I mean, the, I would. This goes back to last week too. If somebody parks over the line by like a foot, like the entire tire is on the other side of the line, you if you key their car, 
you're pardoned. I think you should just make an executive order that a place like Walmart hires a guy with a baseball bat to walk up <laughs> in the parking lot. And if somebody goes in angled and takes up two spots, he just goes to town. On I, I think I think I would use no. I think I'm using a seven iron because they could break the window a whole lot easier than a bat because you got that leading edge. I guess so, or at least <laughs> man. Or if somebody, like, say it's, well, there's never a last spot in Walmart because they've always got, like, how many, what, 300 spots and 20% of them are taken unless everybody's in there going for toilet paper. But, um, who like, everybody gets to hit everybody else's car that uh, parks over the line and make the alarm go off. Of course, then on the other side of that, that kind of pisses everybody else off, so maybe not. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say a designated, <laughs> they would have a designated hitter at the Walmart parking lot. At least the greeters get to do something. I would put the bat in a greeter's hand and like sit there with a surveillance camera or whatever. That would be my dream. That would be my dream. Scary. Huh? It's a little scary just having, you know, some someone with their little what, yellow vest walking around with a <laughs> smile on the back, just walking around the, the Walmart parking lot with a bat. The guy that's got that motorized cart buggy that pushes like three hundred at a time back into the Walmart. <laughs> I don't know what kind of horsepower that cart buggy trolley has, but it's got it's got a it must be a 454 or something. But uh, and uh, on a side note, also if anybody doesn't return their uh, shopping cart to the buggy bay or whatever, what do y'all call it? What do y'all yeah, call? Yeah, that it? too. That's a yeah. capital offense. Go smack those people around with a baseball bat. Yeah, I would uh, make them go give out free samples in the pharmacy for like itch cream or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it, it would be pre- it would be a pretty uh, hefty punishment. But um, so, all right, Landon, your turn. What do you got now? I was going to do an executive order to get rid of stickers on fruit. <laughs> yeah. Those bit, those, those stickers are a bitch to get off. But you can tear up an apple trying to get those damn things off. And then, and then when you try to get it off with your finger, no, that, that's not what she scrape said. Off, but you scrape off the skin, the best part. Not to mention, there's got to be some kind of chemical to make that crap stick on your fruit. But you get it under your fingernail, and then you got to spend the next. And then, don't <laughs> think you can't get a, a a apple skin cut on your finger. Trust me, it, it it's possible. Kind of like go walking through a cornfield and getting a, a leaf cut. We cannot just oh, skim yeah. over that. Landon said the best thing about the apple was the skin. <laughs> it is. Says who? What psychopath did you become this me. week? I thought you said you were just like I said everything was the same as last week. When did you become a psychopath over the weekend? <laughs> Once you've eaten all the skin off the apple, the apple's not quite as good. I, I, I mean, would. You have, you have part. It's not like you eat just the skin. You have part of the apple in there with it. When you okay, take so it's like the skin flesh combo. We're yeah. Somebody's gonna think we're cannibals if they hear just this little bit of it. <laughs> I want to yeah. see. I want to see Landon eat a pineapple. That's what I want to see. Pineapple's pretty good. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't mind a sticker on that. Cause... Well, that would no because aren't they kind of woolly on the outside? No, that's coconut. Yeah, but they do have the spice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would get rid of the stickers. A sticker on a uh, piece of fruit. So do you wash? Do you always wash your fruit? Oh yeah. Do you think? Uh, in, so in your thinking, whatever rancid chemical. A quick three second wash of a fruit is gonna get it all off. It's it's foolproof. It how, take care of it. how hot is that water? <laughs> no, I don't think it removes where the sticker was, but again, so, that's why I want to get rid of them. So do you think they put the sticker on before they chemical put the chemical on it or after they put the chemical on it? I would assume before. All right. Well I would have I would have never thought that was a thing, but my my oldest boy, who's ten years old, is completely averse to tags on anything. He was gonna cut the tag off of my blanket for me. I'm like, dude, go go to bed. This is my blanket, and uh, it's one of those weighted blankets. And I I think it's like full of those. I don't know what it's full of. It feels like sand. Is this like is this like three thirty in the morning, and your son's standing next to you with a pair of scissors? <laughs> He's like this. <laughs> And you wake up. He's like this, Dad, Dad, Dad. Can I cut the tag off your blanket? So yeah, no, it's a. Uh, I don't know what it is. I mean, some of them are comfortable, but I think the best thing that happened to my son's life is the tagless shirt. So <laughs> <laughs> it is easier to figure out when their shirts are on backwards. Okay, Landon or uh, Ashton, back to you. What have you got for us? 
Um, I think that we should just ban people from doing TikTok dances in public. Absolutely. And singing yeah, on Twitter. Singing on Twitter. I haven't seen any singing on Twitter. What? Well, Ooh. I'm not going to name any names. No, no. I'm not going to name any names, but I can't stand it. Yeah. And <laughs> I haven't seen it on Twitter. Uh, well, there's a certain person that I'm not going to get into, but I just... Can we just, can we just ban dancing? <laughs> <laughs> I did... Brandon, just admit that you can't dance. Oh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> So how did you woo Kimmy? That's what I want to know. I don't really know. know. Was it like the night at the Roxbury? You and like one of your other bros were doing that whole thing from Saturday Night Live? It was like one of those things where like somebody that can't golf and they go out and just shoot like one under one under par. Yeah. Just one of those one of those rare moments where it was just Mm -hmm. it was just a good stretch. Or or on the opposite Huh? Now it's too late for her to go. Yeah, that's true. Or it can be on the opposite side where they uh, just uh, they get to the golf course and they're just like, man, I just can't believe I don't know what's wrong with me today. I usually birdie that hole. Like, dude, yeah. we made you pick it up after you were on eight. So, okay, just uh, we, we know. Yeah, like when Michael Scott's playing basketball and he shoots it over the backboard. <laughs> usually make those. I usually make what's wrong with me today. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of which, we went to uh, the niece's uh, J- J- actually JV basketball game last night, man. Those girls, dude, they get freaking vicious. There was actually a flagrant foul, which um, they were the other team had to start fouling Vega because uh, they were it was like a minute left, and uh, but they had to they had like they only had three fouls, so they had like four fouls to give before they could get to the free lo- free throw line to get stop to the bonus, clock. Yeah. yeah, to get to bonus. So uh, <laughs> they, but anyway, the very first one, she basically just shoved her, and it was like they called it a technical or something. So yeah, it was nice. it was pretty funny, but uh, nonetheless, okay, so. And now, Ashton, this isn't very good for women's ears, but I'm sure you've heard worse. We need surveillance cameras in all men's bathrooms at gas stations, so whoever shits all over the wall is forced to eat the four-month-old weenies spinning on the rotisserie out front. <laughs> whoever these animals are that are going into these bath, and of course, I mean, again, I don't blame the attendants for not wanting to go in there and wash that stuff, because I don't know if it's... <laughs> from Dirty Mike and the boys, you know, going in there and having a soup kitchen. It's just, I, I don't blame them <laughs> one to go in there. And, um, Thanks for the egg shack. <laughs> Thanks for the egg shack, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, I don't know what women's bathrooms are like in gas stations, Ashton, but I can't, uh, I mean, they've got to be better, just for the simple physicalities of the differences between men and women. But um, People that like pee on the toilet pa- paper roll. Like why? It's f- <laughs> the best is when the toilet paper has got the uh, wet fingerprints of the last person that was on <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Ashton, do you feel free to hang up at any time if you want to? <laughs> oh no, I'm en- enjoying this. I, I shouldn't say enjoying this. Are you enjoying and this it- discourse? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's no wet fingerprints on the toilet paper in the women's bathrooms. I'd be a little bit concerned if there was. Well, you should be. Yeah, I would be concerned <laughs> if you weren't concerned. That would be extremely distra- uh, just distressing for me. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. And then, like, so where we have our stock show in Hereford for the county show, Ashton, it's called the Bull Barn. And in the men's bathroom, there have never been doors on the stalls. And they just took the trough out last year, Landon. When did they take the trough out and we actually had individual urinals? Man, I haven't, I haven't been out there in years. I don't know that have. <laughs> well, I remember back now, back when I was a kid and and um, at the football games at the Hereford football games, they had they didn't even have the trough. They just had the wall with the channel below the floor, and um, of course that was back in the late eighties and early nineties, and uh, it just it it even seemed wrong to me then because everybody was on the same level. And you were just, it was like a uh, slop channel. And it was, I guess nobody got molested back then. I guess that's why it was okay. But um, now I get grumpy if the partitions don't go all the way down to the floor. So um, it's just, it, it, it's a concerning thing for me. And it really, it, may, it, it keeps me awake at night. Ashton's shaking her head like, huh? I'm just glad that I'm a woman and I don't mm-hmm. have to experience this. Yes, thank you. There is there is something to that inequality thing. And I think 
women's bathrooms are probably a little more <laughs> they're they're separate but they're more equal than that. that's, that's the one thing we have on you guys yes uh-huh. <laughs> nice bathrooms except they still have to sit so uh the the <laughs> my favorite thing speaking of which since we're going the bar the midnight rodeo now you never went to the midnight rodeo it was tragically torn down long before you got there but um and this is not just midnight rodeo but any country bar the girls that would go into the men's bathroom and not only go into the men's bathroom, but they would go in there barefoot. I wouldn't go in there. I would wear two pairs of socks before I went to Midnight Rodeo bathroom. And, like, if I could put, like, those uh, bull hauler trucker galoshes that they put over their boots when they get out to unload a load of cattle, I would put those on if I if, if it got me in more dates. But uh, before I would go barefoot into a Midnight Rodeo country bar bathroom, it's just pretty disgusting. I don't care how bad your feet hurt. They don't hurt that bad. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. So um, I don't know where those the heck those girls might be in the set of the State Department right now. You know, running you the can, world. You can see a twenty dollar bill on the floor in the bathroom <laughs> at Midnight Rodeo and and have it have a debate whether or not to pick it up. <laughs> you would pick it up. I, I would. But you'd have to debate for a minute. Yeah, I don't know if I was ever that drunk to get the. Uh, of course, you know, can I can't imagine nowadays with the cell phones at the bar. Ashton, is there any kind of insight you can give us to the bar scene with with the uh, cell phones and the camera phones? Give us a little insight. There's got to be a little insight on because the, the, we didn't really have, and Landon still doesn't have a camera phone, but so for those of us that are in the 20th century, we can, uh, and I, yes, I said 20th, um, I think we kind of quit going to the bar by the time the, the camera phones really got popular, but... Um, Thank goodness. There, Thank I goodness. do have a story. There was one time I had posted something, like a picture on Snapchat, and this boy wanted to hang out with me, and I wasn't responding to him, but I was at the bar with my friends, Uh-oh. and he saw my Snapchat, knew what bar I was at, showed up. Stalker. So not good. Not Stalker. good. Stalker. Yeah. And y'all dated for six months after that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Ashton, who's that? Who's, got out. who's that on your bed? <laughs> who's that on your bed? Turn around. <laughs> Who's behind you? Oh, God. It's just a picture of Landon. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so my, you got my full sleeves on. Now, now clarify this for me. He figured out where you were, or y'all happened to be at the same place? No, he figured out where oh, I was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like stalking. Yeah. Yeah. That's a classic stage five clinger right there, is what that is. So, uh huh. Yeah. yeah. One red flag that I took note of yeah well you know he probably took his shoes off before he went in the women's bathroom so you know yeah don't those. open those blinds behind was you. it <laughs> was it at the blue light was it at the blue light or was it at the library no it was actually at this place called shotsies it's a karaoke bar now nice shotsies sounds like a classy joint well uh okay so what would that that would have to bring up some kind of an executive give us an executive order for the bar ashton just off the top of your head what is give us give us something for the bar? Because Landon and I we're we're going to bed at night. Well, <clears throat> we're falling asleep at nine o'clock. But um, all right, executive order for the bar. Um, people uh, for who dudes, enjoy, huh? <laughs> people who enjoy straight tequila shots should do some kind of prison time. Te- tequila is pretty nasty. I would give you that. I would give you that. Now, um, are they still smoking in all the bars? No. Vaping? Yes. <laughs> that should be that. That should be one for the bar. Everybody gets a bucket of water when they go in, and anybody that's vaping around you, you can dump the water right <laughs> in their face, <laughs> and they can't retaliate. Because now, aren't those elect? Are those electronic, or they're just electronic cigarettes? You're stupid. <laughs> I don't even know, like what goes into them or anything like that they've come up instead of like recharging it and redoing it they've come up now where it's just like you get so many hits off of it and then it's gone forever don't don't some of those things have usb ports on them mm-hmm. that's insane it's got a it's got a got to charge up my my sig here if you would have told <laughs> if you would have told me 20 years ago that somebody would be saying hang on dude i gotta go charge my cigarette i would have told you you're crazy but you can't smoke anywhere in the bars in Lubbock anymore. Um, Adolph's. I'm pretty sure you can still smoke at Adolph's. 
You would think of all the places a Nazi would be the most stringent on stuff like that. Thanks a lot, Hitler. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, thanks a lot, Bin Laden. (laughs) Uh, Oh, man. Midnight Rodeo was, though. I better make sure we're still recording here. I bet we are, but uh, yeah, we are. Man, Midnight Rodeo, well, any bar for that matter, but if you went to Midnight Rodeo, you, and we smoked at Midnight Rodeo, like, it was pretty, it was a train wreck. But see uh, you vape for Brent. I've never tried to vape. I think people vape just because they get to look like they did in third grade where it was real cold outside and got to see all that steam coming out because it makes like, it looks like some kind of coal-fired power plant when they exhale all that stuff. And um, I don't know. I don't get it, I guess. But they, and they then they say it's just as dangerous or more dangerous <laughs> than um, an actual cigarette. So I don't know. You can come up with a new way to look like a douchebag. It's going to be a hit. I guarantee you there is never going to be a shortage of that. Um, don't, you don't even have to have technology to do that. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, executive orders for the bar. You, If you're a dude and you're line dancing, you better be on the verge of hooking up because otherwise you just like stupid yeah. or something else that I'm not going to say. But, um yeah, that's uh, and so the punishment for that would be, I don't know, you have to. Yeah, you better be, you better be George Strait about to whip that lady's boyfriend's ass and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, it, it's it's a troubling sight to to be uh to be for sure about it. But um, also no more um no more proposals on jumbotrons or any other public displays of engagements. Um, I think that's. I mean, unless you unless you're not sure about what the girl's going to answer, which you should already be like ninety nine percent sure before you ask any girl to marry you. Um, you know, if you're only fifty percent sure, it's probably okay to do it in public. That way, it pressures her to marry you and stay with you for the rest of your life. Um, I would because- change that. I, I would say it's okay to to publicize that. If you publicize asking her dad's permission <laughs> in, the, in the same way. <laughs> yeah. It, it would have to be a TikTok video. So if you ask a girl's dad on a Jumbotron, if, if you can marry his daughter, then then it's okay. You yeah. Do it. mm-hmm. It's a, uh, yeah, I guess that I would guess that would be okay. But um, the, the whole pressure and him into it. I mean, you got to think ahead, Ashton. That's probably now you're a sing are you're a single lady and or not married anyway. Are you uh, are you down with that executive order? I can be down with that executive order. Yeah. Is he gonna have to ask your dad's per- or your mom or dad's permission? Yes. Yeah. For re- boy, she didn't even hesitate. Damn. That was a uh, you're old school. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I just need them to talk to my dad a little bit. It's really funny because my dad is he's super goofy and weird, and so people are intimidated by him. So I think I just think that the idea of the conversation would be pretty funny. Is it Prison Mike or who? who who's your dad? <laughs> <laughs> what? So what should the guy say to your dad? Oh my gosh! Don't even get me started on that. I don't want to have that conversation right now. You're going to make me have a heart attack at 21. It's it's a podcast, Ashton. We're we're filling material. Yes, make it a long story. Yeah, we probably need to do some more executive orders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut this up, Landon. This isn't an executive order podcast anymore. <laughs> this is how to get married. If you were going to do an executive order your fiance, what would it be when in, in regards to asking your dad your, for your hand in marriage? <laughs> there you go. Oh, I don't even know. Should he take him out to dinner? No. Just like pull him aside and... Hey. Just pull him aside. It's like they're in. It's like halftime at a tech game, and um, it's like, hey, sir, would he would he call him? Would he call him Mister Carr? No, he'd call him Devin. De- oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I've called anybody Mister in a long time. But, What's up, Dev? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, in between your diet Pepsi and a, and a box of uh, you know Junior Mints, you th- figure it's okay if Ashton and I, you know, get married. That's kind of just as informal as it needs to be. Yeah, he's a pretty informal guy. As long as they have the conversation, I think it'll be okay. Well, hey, I guess whatever works. So um, that's pretty good. Well, executive orders, you know, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty, well, I wouldn't say they're ironclad because they just pretty much all got undone last week. But uh, nonetheless, Landon, have you got, what else have you got for us? My next one is kind of a two-parter. It's kind of, it's kind of with words. 
I would change the plural the plural of moose to meese, <laughs> kind of like geese. And also, I would do away with the word bi-monthly because it's too confusing. <laughs> it's also kind is of it, sexually um, ambiguous, is it, too. Is it twice a month or is it every other month? Well, Lenny, and the answer to that is it's both. The answer is it's bi-monthly or semi-monthly. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, so I kind of blew you up there. But, uh, yeah. No, I can go with that. Uh, grammar police, they should all be uh, locked up, I would think so. Because, um, okay. really, who made the rules for the grammar? I mean, I talk good. <laughs> now, now, why does that sound bad? Because some uh, some old lady back in, like, 1738 said, no, we're not going to talk that way. We're going to talk the, uh, what's the, uh, how do they say, the uh not royal language um old i forgot how they say it but whatever the case is um i mean we're basically following a bunch of rules set by people back in like the 1800s or whatever so they want basically want you to talk like it's the king james version of the bible so um which land and he land i've heard land and throw in these and thous and arts and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I keep it old school. <laughs> he keeps it 17th. He keeps it 18th century. So, uh, yeah, grammar police. I would say they were definitely punishable by at least 20 years. And um, what other what other words that need to be uh, need to be thrown around? What have we fought over? Lots of people have fought over. If you say warsh, I'd say that's a problem. I think we should bring the word school marm back for teachers. <laughs> oh, I I'm down with that. <laughs> And uh, old lady, the word old, marm is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love marm. It's so close to marmalade that I just it's in yeah. marmalade. I think is pretty disgusting, but uh, whatever. What you learn from the old school marm. Today? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, old single ladies they shouldn't be called. Wi- well, no, if they were they were never married. But you know, an old uh, old ladies that were never married, you know, referred to as old maids. But you can't really say that anymore. But I really think that needs to be brought back in because um, you know equal equal rights. So, uh, are you going to, so whenever, when you get married, Ashton, and you've been married for 30 years, you going to call him your old man? I guess. I don't know. You're asking me all these questions about marriage and stuff. I'm what, getting a little scared. It's just hypotheticals. Would you be okay if he called you his old lady? Sure. I've been watching a lot of Sons of Anarchy lately, so <laughs> I'll, I'll go with yes. I figured they say it a whole lot more, uh. More derogatory <laughs> stuff on Sons of Anarchy. Like it started with a B and it ended with an itch. I figured that was, I've never watched it, but I figured that's what they called their ladies on. Cause isn't oh, that no. a motorcycle all, all show? All the biker dudes, all the biker dudes, their girlfriends, they're their old ladies. Yeah. What is it? These oh. biker dudes on this show are so emotional. They're always like hugging each other. Supposed, they're supposed to be like all these badasses and they spend half the movie hugging each other and telling each other they love each other. It's, it's annoying. It's a good show, but it's annoying. Ashton, are you sure okay. he's watching the same show as you are? I don't know. I, yeah, we're watching it. They're emotional. <laughs> I've seen so good. I've seen an episode of Yellowstone, and I don't think any of the cowboys hugged each other. Yeah. Now, Landon, tell me about that one cowboy movie you watched where they did a whole lot more than hugging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never saw Broke Back, whatever you what you may call it, but uh, yeah. No. no uh, speaking of hugging, now when is it appropriate? Well, I think I, I already know the answer to this, but for dudes like old like old buddies to hug, like say they hadn't seen each other and how many years separated, is it okay when dudes meet for the first time in like however many years, is it okay for them to hug? Like a year, two years, five weeks? I don't think any any time frame. I think if I think if your buddy just picked up like a thousand pound like if your house collapses on you and your buddy digs you out, give him a hug. Pay <laughs> <laughs> his kids college, whatever. I don't. If somebody know. saves your life. Hug him. <laughs> I don't. Know. A house collapse. I don't know. I don't know if I can get past a fist bump. I mean, unless your arm's broken. Of course, if your arm's broken, you're not hugging either. Yeah, maybe not. Because Ashton, when it rains a quarter of an inch, and somebody saves you from drowning on campus because that's how well it drains. Would you would you hug them? If they were a stranger, no. <laughs> Jeez, thanks a lot. What if it's that stalker guy? No. Well, it's still amazing. Oh, it's still, he, a, he, but he did he, save he, your he, life. 
he'd, he'd probably expect a little bit more than a hug, and I don't know that I could do that. He, <clears> he's right, behind, there's a reason he saved me. It's because he was he's right there. Right so you me. would rather be dead and not hugged by a stalker than alive and hugged by a stalker? I guess I would allow it. Well, I have to respect that because, I mean, if you're not leading him on, of course, you don't really have to lead on a stalker. <laughs> I, think, I think they've already haven't gotten the point by now. Is this stalker guy a ginger that doesn't wear sleeves? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. I just want him to have jail time so he'll leave me alone. <laughs> it's pre- I guarantee you, again, it's Prison Mike. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> huh. And it still amazes me that um, they no longer, at the bar, you don't get numbers. You get, like, Snapchat handles. That, that just a, It annoys the crap out of me. People can't talk on the phone anymore or at least text. It annoys the crap out of me. I think it's, like, immature. I'd rather give out my phone number. But, like, so, for instance, let's say that, what do you do, like, say you get, a dude gets your number at the bar, or gets your Snapchat, or, who, or like, your, your friend, I'm sure, friends or whatever. Like, how does the discourse go? Like, is it is it audible, or is it video? What is it? Like, how do we talk? Yeah, like, say, yeah, you start maybe a possible new relationship, you know, after maybe not you necessarily, but some one of your friends has a one nighter with some, you know, random dude at uh, Scooters or wherever <laughs> Skeeters or what was the name of that Adolf Hitler place? But <laughs> Shotzi's. Uh, <laughs> Shotzi's. But um, so, but you send like what five second replies back and forth? How does it work? I mean, you can, I don't know, send photos back and forth. I mean, there's like no, now there's not really a time limit. You get to choose how long they're, they can view it for. But yeah, basically. So once, there for a short period of time. So once you view, uh, like before they did the time limits, once you viewed it, that was it. Yep. So just, if you're distracted, you missed it. Mm hmm. That's amazing. It's a real nice conversation. Would that have been around for Tiger Woods, man? <laughs> <laughs> Only he could have Snapchatted all those. All those women. His wife. Oh, man. To think, I mean, a Swedish, uh, what do you call them? Nannies over there? Au pairs. Au pairs. That's like the ultimate of dudes that, I mean, a sweet, like a Swedish. And she was a swimsuit model, too, wasn't she? That's like the. Oh, she was a looker. Huh? She was a looker. Yeah, she's a 10. She was a. But I'm mean, like, whenever you talk about. You know, some dude wants the hottest chick in the world, and it's like, it's always Swedish swimsuit model. And he had that, and he's still, like, with a dozen women, which I guess, when you're throwing it around like that and getting four masters in a row, I guess it's do whatever you want. But You give, you give a golfer a shot at a mulligan, he's going to take it. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, that was like the biggest divorce settlement ever on record. I don't know. No, no, that was Bezos, the Amazon guy. I think his wife got like what a few billion and he put it all on GameStop last week and uh now he's a trillionaire <laughs> so uh <laughs> that is so awesome well uh let's see how 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 much nonsense have we talked about this week oh yeah we're getting pretty close to the end talked uh, about, oh, about five executive orders <laughs> <laughs> this i'm gonna call this the uh the divergence farmer podcast or something i don't know Mom almost got ashton's future planned out and for real so now what are your children's no i'm just kidding but well, uh you got a restraining order what's the first step <laughs> <laughs> ashton what have you got some more for us i don't want to leave any off the table um i think that fast food like drive through should be open past midnight they're always closed whenever i really need them okay Taco so- Bell is 24 hours Mm-mm. not around here Huh. Okay, Ashton. Here now. Here is the question: What is what are you limited to? At, I guess really at Sonic. Well, no, Sonic or any. What is your order size limited to in the drive-through, as opposed to having to go inside or like Sonic go into the stalls? Like what I'm getting at is: Are you allowed to buy like eight hamburgers, or are you only getting desserts at the drive-through? What are you doing? Um. I think it's appropriate as long as it's not like two separate orders. Whenever I go through with my friends and they're like, oh, let's get two separate orders. That's just, it's way too confusing. It's too much. Can't do that. You mean you're, you mean they asked to like break the check into two checks? Yeah. 
Who does that? I didn't even think they did that. I've done that multiple times per requests. Why do you? And it's not fun. Why don't you get some new? Why don't you get some new friends? Yeah. Bro, I, I guess I need to get a couple of rich friends so they'll pay for my meals and not want to split the check. Is this at Whataburger? Yeah, like stuff like that. I have a question. Is is Lone Wolf still open? No, I've never heard of that. Oh wow! Do you know I went to Lone Wolf twice and never went inside because I was <laughs> passed out in the back seat. <laughs> I don't know how many times I went there. It was awesome. It was like a late night. Wasn't the food? Shop. Wasn't it? Mexican wasn't it awful? No, it was awesome. Oh really? Was it like a like just gut bombs or? No, it was good. Oh, it would have been worth you waking up. No, I wasn't waking up. No, that was out of the question. <laughs> I don't even I don't even remember where it was it on nineteenth? Is either on nineteenth or thirty fourth. I can't remember. Nineteenth so no I'm pretty sure it's nineteenth, yeah. Well, actually it might be open now that I think about it. There is like a little taco shop right by Lubbock High. That's open. Oh no no no. No, no it's on the west side of campus. Yeah. Yeah. No, no longer available. Uh let's look it up because that's what we have the internet for. Okay. Lone Wolf Cafe. Oh, I got to take off National Ginger Day here. Lone Wolf Cafe. This is going to have to be... There's one in Amherst. Lubbock. Here we go. Enhance. Lone Wolf Express is on... Uh, it is on... What is it? 19th. I was right. Right inside the loop... It's over by the cemetery. That, that makes sense. <laughs> it's in between Rest Haven Cemetery and We Care Child Center. <laughs> <laughs> That's that quite pretty much covers all your bases right there. So um, <laughs> now you never said exactly how much. So what are, what is a person allowed to get in the drive through? Like for so Sonic is the best because you got the stalls right there. So. Are you getting like multiple combo meals? You have to go in the stall or what? Um, I don't know. I Chick Fil A is like the best. You can get you can get like the whole menu at Chick Fil A. You'll be fine. Uh, any water burger in Lubbock is gonna take like twenty minutes just for one order. So I would say <laughs> go in. Yeah, well, um, Chick Fil A is kind of an island unto itself because um, they have like the best service in the world. But yeah, uh, incredible service. Yeah, unmatched. It. Uh, I saw a deal the other day. It was at a Chick Fil A drive through, and they had like this clear plastic like shield around this order taker that was standing outside, and it was like raining, you know, pouring outside. And well, I saw the news two days ago. They got over in Florida. They got the manager of a Chick Fil A to direct a drive through vaccination deal for the coronavirus. I'm serious. Like the governor, like the mayor, or I don't know if it's the governor or whatever, called him up and asked him to come over and direct a drive through for coronavirus. It's like, I'll take a vaccination and some waffle fries, please. So, uh, yeah, that's Give me uh, a special sauce at Chick fil A sauce. <laughs> Chick fil A sauce. Just rub, just rub it over. Instead, I don't want rub that. It, I don't want where the, they put the shot. <laughs> yeah, I don't want sanitizer. I want that right there. I want it directly into the stream. Can you just yeah. put it into the syringe, inject it into me? <laughs> I like that executive order, uh, Ashton. That's very good. I would have. Uh, what is what the, the drive throughs are? Uh, they're a whole other episode in and of itself. But um, yeah, I agree with you. That's kind of like the ten items or less deal. Um, I think once you've gone over your limit, you have to go inside or, uh, the worst feeling in the world is seeing a drive through that's really packed going inside thinking you're going to beat it. There's one person in front of you and you see that last car going out the window, going past the window. As you walk out, you could have kept your lazy ass in the car or the pickup, but no, you thought you were going to beat them all. I think I think they do that on purpose. I think the people see you coming inside and you're in their territory and they like buck up the uh the drive through lane because they don't want you in there. That's what I think. I think that's the conspiracy of the day. Hmm. But you know, that's just me. Landon, what else you got? Uh I would make an executive order banning all beans and chili. Banning all beans and chili, what would you eat? Chili without beans. 
No, you gotta have beans. Ashton, chili's got beans in it. Um, like homemade chili, I'm good with. I'm good with the beans. But if I want just a Frito chili pie, I I want classic chili, no beans, Hormel, right out of the can. I don't know why not having beans in chili is a thing. It's just why don't you just leave the cheese off your nachos? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, free. I would say Fritos would all is also, and this could be a whole other deal. Gives you what gives you the worst breath? Frito breath has got to be up there. Onion breath. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Let's. I don't know, Ashton. A good a good wafting of Fritos from your best friend. They deserve a pretty pretty good fresh one across the face because it's. Is it is it worse if you've eaten the chili Fritos? Oof. Or the or the scoops. I bet the scoops would make it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it because the scoops kind of cup in that scent. <laughs> they just kind of hold it there, and it floats right in the bottom of that scoop. But boy, you could get a whole lot of bean dip on the on those Fritos. <laughs> it's so, like you could go through a bottle of ranch dressing in one sitting with a scoop of Fritos. This yeah, it is so awesome. I've, I hadn't had scooped Fritos in a long time. It's it's a dream of mine. Land, what did you just see on the computer? You just went. Huh? Hey, Land, it just went like this. Hang on, what did I do? You had like some kind of freakish, like Scream, oh, I was reading something. Scream Three movie look on your face, but uh, yeah. Do you like scary movies? <sighs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Ashton, what else you got? Um, I think we should just get rid of oatmeal raisin cookies. Oh yeah, definitely. Those. Freaking tricksters get Any, me every time. Anybody that tries to disguise an oatmeal cookie as a chocolate chip cookie needs an ass beating. Oh, man. The only person that needs an ass beating worse than that is the ones that try to disguise liver and onions as smothered steak at ranch at the ranch house. Because <laughs> that's disgusting. Have you ever had liver and onions, Ashton? No. Don't. Because uh, that is one of the few things in life in the food world that not only is disgusting, but is also bad for you. Usually everything that's bad for you is awesome. I went to the ranch house. We have a ranch house. Every small town has one. Y'all probably had one down in Prosper or something, which I guess Prosper is not all that small. But uh, whatever the case, we have a ranch house, and um, they always have liver and onion. I don't know if it's every day, but uh, whatever the case, they do have chicken fried steak every day. Go in there. I'm like, oh, that looks like smothered steak. And... Um, I almost threw it on the wall because when I bit into it, I didn't. I figured I figured out what it was, but um, and there's people down. Of course, these people are 105 years old, but they're just chow. I'm like, this isn't the depression. They bought liver back in the day because it was like four cents, and they could afford to eat it after they after they uh, tenderized the jackrabbits in the jackrabbit roundup they had the previous weekend. So I don't know. I don't know why they still serve it, but uh, I think liver has like ten thousand milligrams of sodium and like fifty thousand grams rich. of cholesterol, huh? It's rich. Yeah, it's pretty, mm. it's pretty rich. That's not even counting the liver gravy that goes on the top of it. So it's, it's the onions were the best thing of that. So um, it was definitely good. an acquired taste. See now, acquired taste that makes no sense to me. <clears throat> Hey, this tastes like shit, but if I give it enough time, I think I'll learn to like it, and then I'll look cool. I mean, that's what you go to college and you drink all this alcohol. None of it tastes good. None of it. I don't think it. you'd look cool if you were eating shit. <laughs> well, ba ta basically, that's what liver and onions was. Were? Was? I don't, I don't think anybody eats liver to try to look cool. Well, no. Like vaping, maybe, but no. <laughs> yeah liver and onions that's just because the mean steward at the nursing home made you eat all your food and that's all they had left so yeah <laughs> <laughs> the orderly there it's either there or the psychopath place that uh yeah so it's pretty scary pretty scary yeah uh see another executive order i, I there's a gotta be a driving executive order the guy that honks half a millisecond after the light turns green and honks I'm throwing it in reverse, and then I'm turning on Shania Twain or something and blasting it out the windows because I ain't moving. Uh, yeah, 
because, hey, I've got to finish that tweet I just started three intersections ago. And I probably ran through two red lights doing it because I always because you have to edit it because there is no delete, you know, edit function on Twitter. So I think also the people when you're in two turn lanes and they try and turn from the inner lane into the outer lane uh-huh. section. Oh my gosh, that grinds my gears. They need to be sentenced. <clears throat> I would say an execution, maybe overkill, but I would say solitary confinement for a couple weeks. But uh, because yeah, you've got the uh, and the uh, the signs that say left lane must turn. I find that a little offensive and a little um, too direct. I would say it would be okay if the inside lane would turn, but you don't have to. Just because it would piss <laughs> off Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> At least throw a please in there or something. But I think I, people should stop using the left turn lane as a merge lane. So, all right, how about this? You're going down, the, you're going down a um, two-lane street, and I know we've all done this, but... Have you ever not been nervous when somebody pulls from the in from the opposite side, like out of a business, and they pull into that middle turn lane, and you just know they're not going to hold it. They're going to keep going down it until they merge into the lane yeah. when you go past them. Have you never not been nervous when that happens? Because all the time I hate it. Yeah, it's uh, mm. Ashton. Oh yes, you've done it. Oh, I've done it, but it still scares me. And I know I make. And when I do it, I know I make them nervous. But I've got the blinker blaring and the uh, horn honking and all kinds of stuff. But uh, it's a uh, yeah, it's this dangerous world out there. So um, when is it okay? What kind of executive order would you give for yellow lights? When do you hit the gas? When do you hit the brake? I mean, obviously you're not hitting the brakes in the middle of the intersection. That would be silly. I mean, how would you hit the brake on a yellow light? I was fixing to say because you don't think you're gonna make it. <laughs> you, of course, you're not if you hit the brake. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! All right, oh, forget that yes. one then. Son of Life's bitch. too short, Brent. Life's too short. You only live once, so I guess you're gonna go through the yellow light. So, uh, I think all stop signs should be replaced with blinking lights or yield signs. Mm. Canyon has yield know. signs in the neighborhoods, and it works good. That's because, yeah, Vega does too, but that's because there's 900 people that live in Vega. But it works in Canyon. There's more than 900 there. No, that's true. But there are college kids. I don't know. I think it would. So they're the most efficient intersection I've ever seen. And Ashton, you probably haven't been there since it's in Amarillo. But there is an intersection on the southwest side in Can- Atlanta. It's the Coyote Corner um, oh, yeah, gas station. There's a four way stop sign. And no matter what time of the day, all four lanes coming into that intersection are probably 15 deep. Yeah. And oh, yeah. you, and it's a, it's four way stop, no light. It's four stop signs. You never wait. Landon, how long have you ever waited there? Not two long. minutes, two minutes. Not that's long. if you're number 15, maybe. The efficiency of that intersection is beyond reproach. Yeah, they should do, they should do studies on that intersection. I don't know why there's not cameras there. I don't know why there's not a news crew there every weekend. Because every other of those 15 cars is hammered because they're coming back from Amarillo, going to WT, or they're going to Hereford, Landon. Or they're going into Amarillo to get hammered. <laughs> they're going into Amarillo. Exactly. So uh, that's, I think. No, it, it works, man. It's efficient. It's true. Most efficient. Chick-fil-A of four-way stops. It's the chi- Absolutely. There's no <laughs> question. That is the chi- This is, I think it rivals or even goes past Chick-fil-A drive throughs because there are no everybody. It's a free for all. There are no directors. There are no order takers. It's all human driven. I would I would make an executive order to give the people at Chick Fil A like those cones that like the people that guide the airplanes have. <laughs> That'd be the, uh, kind of fun. But then we'd have to learn all the uh, Air Force signals or whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah. Only know the Army signals. Yeah, that that would be pretty good. I think there would be more people with that. Um, what about, and we're probably getting long here, but what about the, the I'm going to call them bums, because I think they're all scamsters, that stand at the corners with the cardboard signs? What should we do with them? Not give them should money. Have, uh, well, yeah. Investigate them. We should audit them. Do you ever, Ashton, have you ever caught yourself making eye contact with them? Yes, and I, it gives me so much anxiety. 
and I just I try to stare because there's so many panhandlers in yeah. Lubbock. So many. Oh really? So yeah. oh my god, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So the worst awkwardness in this is probably what you're alluding to is and this goes back to the yellow light red light thing. I don't care if that light's already red and I know I'm fixing to be the guy that's going to be stopped right by this guy. I am laying the hammer down. And I'm going through that intersection because I'm not spending the next three most awkward moments of uh, minutes of my life standing next to this guy with a sign that says anything helps. God bless. <laughs> there was one time I was at the Whataburger drive through on 19th and Avenue Q and it was nighttime and I had ordered and there, I had seen a man walking around. So I just rolled up my window and I, and he came over and I was with my roommate at the time. He came over and he was standing um, outside of my window and I was just looking at my roommate and she wasn't even looking at me because she didn't want to look in his direction. He started banging on the window <laughs> in the drive through So I couldn't go anywhere. So oh, I, turned the I, oh. I turned around and I look at him and I said, no. And he was like, I can't, I don't even know what he said, but he was just trying to talk to me from the window. And I was like, no. And it was the the most awkward experience. I don't know if he was panhandling, trying to get some money or what, but. <laughs> he was probably wanting oh. to do a split ticket with you, imagine. <laughs> 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 Can I get a second ticket to get on a Whataburger? Do you have um, a Snapchat? <laughs> yeah. His wife probably just got murdered and was trying to get a cell phone to call the cops. Thanks a lot, Ashton. It was all my fault. Jeez. Oh, that was the th <laughs> that was the third murder of that year. So uh, yeah, well guys, we're gonna run out of a bandwidth here if we go any further. But um, Ashton, why don't you tell us how you can uh, find the Global Ag Network? Well, you can find us at globalagnetwork.com where you can listen to the Dryline Farmer podcast, more podcasts, of course, that we have on the network, specifically Ag News Daily, which I'm a part of every day with Delaney Howell. And you can follow along on social media at Ag News Daily or Ag News Daily, Global Ag Network. There we go. <laughs> that is exactly right. And just like Ashton said, uh, Ashton, where can we find you on social media? What is your personal cell phone number and um, social media? Where will I be having network? dinner? <laughs> yes. Where, where will you be next Friday night? No. What, what is your social media presence? My Twitter is just Ashton underscore car. Ashton underscore car. Landon? Uh, no twit. Landon, 44. And you're going to find me at Trader Brent. That's at Trader Brent. We'll tweet this episode out. And, um, yeah, we're all over what? Google Play. What are we all over, Ashton? Google Play, iTunes, SoundCloud. We might even be on the oh, North, North North Korean network. I don't know. <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't know. They would probably monetize that a I, little bit better. Huh? I, I think we're pretty big in Pyongyang. So um, it's a... We're, we might have a free flight over there next week, but uh, yeah, we can. You can find us all over the place, and uh, looking forward to more episodes with Ashton because she's so cool and she's Red Raider. So, uh, guys, until next time, y'all stay cool, y'all be awesome, and hey, give us a good rating and review. And once again, if you give us a crappy review, at least be creative about it because we're all about creativity. So, until next time, guys, we'll ask you, what side of the line are you on? The Dryline Farmer Podcast, a member of the Global Ag Network. There's podcasts, and then there's this, the Dryline Farmer Podcast.